Gravatar is an infamously difficult early 80s arcade vector graphics game that took the controls of asteroids, added a tractor beam and shield, then added the gravity mechanics of Lunar Lander to create a cave shooter and solar system overworld game that was so tough a lot of people, myself included, never really played it since it was a painfully quick way to lose 25 cents. The arcade game was meant to be a conversion for asteroids cabinets once they stopped making money, but it was not a big commercial success. However, retro releases and subsequent decades along with the Atari 2600 game has kept it in the list of Atari classics. Consoles and emulation over the years have let people better understand and experience the game, and now the folks behind the Recharge releases have somewhat surprisingly picked it to launch the next wave of games in the series. I say somewhat surprisingly because while it isn't a title that comes to mind for games likely to get a Recharge treatment, the general gameplay lends itself well to the new Atari VCS. There are several cave shooter style games on the VCS including Guntech and Thrustlander, and both have been well regarded for how fun they are to play with a classic controller and how good of a fit they are for the system. The classic lends itself well to turning with twist while thrusting with a stick, and just like in Guntech and Thrustlander, it works really well here. You can also play great with a modern controller, and I've found myself using both equally. The people who made the original Gravatar arcade game deliberately made it hard, so hard they never really expected anyone to get through its four levels and start the loop over again. Gravatar Recharge does away with the start the loop over again part. Yes, this game has an ending, even in arcade mode but it also does away with the quick and frequent deaths and tight-knuckled gameplay of the arcade. Gravatar Recharge is, strangely enough, one of the most chill games on the console. The game is still tough, although it's much more easy than the arcade, but the actual pace is deliberate and generally slow to medium in speed. You will do better by taking your time, aiming carefully, and planning your fight rather than flying into it blind. Musician Megan McDuffie once again provides a soundtrack, and this one is particularly well suited to the paperback sci-fi cover pastel graphics and spacey floaty gameplay. I think it may actually be the soundtrack that brings all of the other slightly changed elements together in a way that works and still feels right for Gravatar. Gone is the option to either clear the solar system or go for the reactor. You have to clear the entirety of each solar system to progress to the next one. There is also a level in each system to gather secret intelligence, which is a nice mechanic to add. As of the time of this recording, no one, or close to it, has completed the game. But I have been told by a representative of the developer that the game does end after completing the fourth solar system. Meaning once you beat it, future playthroughs are about getting a better score by completing the game more quickly and accurately. The representative also did mention what happens at the end of the game, but I'd rather not spoil it at this time in the game's early release. So far, I have just slightly dipped into the third solar system. The first is fairly easy. So easy, in fact, it does get slightly tedious during future playthroughs. However, the second ramps up the difficulty quickly with the introduction of shielded enemies that cannot be destroyed until you first shoot a button-like object shielding them. You can also break a ship's shield protection by getting it to fly after you, which which generally involves a near collision. Some of the power-ups return from previous recharge games, like the large laser cannon that actually helps here, and the spread shot, but there are new power-ups in the form of an EMP that disables laser gates and shields, and an overload that turns off your ability to fire but makes you invulnerable and able to destroy anything you touch. Overall, I found them nice, but not required, and the game has a neat mechanic where you can disable power-ups for a small points boost at the end. You can also disable multiple lives or your own personal shield for a similar points boost, but that's likely to result in a much, much shorter game. The length of each Gravatar Recharge games is quite long, much longer than any previous game in the Recharge series. I've been averaging about 15 minutes per game, long enough that a few times I've wished there was a save function there is not. There are, however, dozens of missions to run. This is the challenges of previous recharge games and focuses on activating beacons, destroying enemies, and other objectives from the arcade mode. Somewhat strangely, the leaderboards for missions are cumulative, meaning placement on the leaderboard is largely a reflection of progress through the missions, although eventually placement will mean completing it better than others once the board fills up. As with almost all of the Recharge games, co-op is a really nice feature and addition to both the arcade and mission modes. The game deals with distance by tethering the two ships together. While you can fly off screen, you will eventually stop, and both players will have to work together to get through the game. It seems tough, but unfortunately I've not been able to get a second player available for the recording. 
However, I was able to determine that one player can complete the co-op arcade and missions modes, since one player losing enough lives lets the other player continue solo. This is good because it means you can get the Platinum Trophy on PlayStation solo, among other things. It does, however, mean that the leaderboards may not be a reflection of an actual two-player game. Gravitar Recharge is a bit like if the developers of Thrustlander and Aerie got together and rethought everything about the source material except for the core gameplay. I love the graphics and music of Gravitar Recharge the most, and I really appreciate the gutsy shift in tone and pace. The gameplay itself feels very authentic to arcade Gravitar, although you aren't constantly one second away from death, quite the opposite. You can stop, think, plan, then execute but you still have to execute well, and the game's difficulty is likely to challenge even somewhat good at the arcade version. Gravitar Recharge has received a temporary exclusive release on the Atari VCS. It surprised launch in May ahead of its listed June 2nd launch for other platforms. It's a nice thing to do for VCS owners, and perhaps this is the start of a trend. Thanks for watching. I'll have more game reviews in the coming weeks, including a look at some DOS box games, the classic game adventure, and more. The channel does slow down a bit in June and July due to real life commitment, but I'm still expecting to get some videos out during that time. Liking helps spread the word about the these videos and subscribing gets these videos in your feed. Have fun!